Hello and welcome to the latest edition of Cantata of the Week. My name is Annette Isselis and I played principal viola for many years for Sir John Eliot Gardner and the English Brock Soloists and the Monteverdi Choir and was lucky enough to be included in this incredible pilgrimage in the year 2000 where we explored the cantatas from the inside and in the context of the church year. The venue we did this particular concert, which was Trinity Church Long Melford in Suffolk, was the most magnificent edifice and I felt it really suited the cantata. It was what's known as a wool church built on the proceeds of all the wool that had been woven by the immigrant Flemish weavers and um, the cloth merchants of Melford and although in the Doomsday Book only 300 sheep are listed they obviously went forth and multiplied because there must have been a lot of money involved in creating a church which has survived so amazingly since the end of the 15th century even a lot of the panels of the original medieval glass are still there. Well, to the cantata now. Um, ich liebe den Hörsten vom ganzen Gemüt, which is BWV 174. And we know that it was performed on June the 6th in 1729, which was Pentecost Monday that year. The text is from the St. John Gospel and tells of the love of God. Now, in that year, it just happened that Bach, having waited a long time, was eventually made director of a wonderful group called Collegium Musicum. And it was a large group of instrumentalists um, that played to a standard far higher than Bach had had at his disposal up till then. And I think he was probably determined to showcase them and therefore he decided to use as his basis of the symphony of this cantata Brandenburg III, First Movement. Um, it's quite a long substantial piece but it really sets the scene. Um, John Eliot has said before that he felt that the church year and the agricultural year were certainly very well related and you get a real almost agricultural feeling from the addition of two horns three oboes and a bassoon to the basic string body of the nine solo players he used before. These horns whoop away joyously and the oboes sort of chatter chirpily and um, the whole thing sets off with most incredibly invigorating bounce. Um, the text, um, The Love of God, it sort of permeates the whole cantata. The Alto aria, which follows the symphonia, is um, has got two oboes, which symbolise love and goodness. Um, the tenor recitative, which is the centrepiece of the whole cantata, is actually minor and um, it does sound a, a more sober note. And um, at the end, even the strings do a sort of shudder at the idea of hell's portals. And after that, we get a bass aria, which is quite steadfast and firm um, and exhorting to, to grasp um, to grasp salvation. Um, the, the string parts, unison strings, the upper strings, violins and violas are sort of quite flighty, but you, you just get the feeling that the bass is, is being steadfast and grasping and keeping to his own agenda. Um, you will know the chorale because it, um, Bach used it at the end of the St. John Passion and here it is clothed in paired quavers and the harmony just gets more and more intense to the final entreaty in the last line. You can find our complete recording to the Bach Cantatas on the SDG label in the shop via our website and I really hope you'll be inspired after listening to today's cantata to delve a bit deeper because the more cantatas you hear, the more you realise how incredibly versatile Bach was and what a genius he was.